Hi, Dr. Galani. So a number of you have uh, sent us these questions and many of these questions resonate as similar, uh, telling me there's lots of confusion, not only between patients but uh, doctors and uh, the way you're being treated for these conditions, in particular, pingecula and pterygium. So I'm making this effort to make sure that we can clarify the correlates of these conditions and how they need to be treated. In fact, I have explained all these concepts in my textbook that I wrote for eye surgeons and eye doctors, uh, which shares about three decades of my work of how pingecula and pterygium surgery needs to be done. Dry eyes by itself is coexistent as a co-pathology of pingecula and pterygium. Understand that please very well. Because of that, dry eyes need to be addressed before you do your pterygium or pingecula surgery, but it can also be addressed during and after. So there's no such thing as it can't be done. First and foremost, I request all the patients not to fall for the advertising and hype that is out there of new technology or new this. Do your research. Dry eye is various levels of dry eyes that I have defined and taught for years now. There are chemical and physical level, levels of dry eyes. Also, there are anatomical breakdowns of what layers are affected, whether it's your lipid layer, the outermost oil layer that maintains the surface tension on your tears, so it doesn't allow the water film, the tear film to break down. Can you imagine that a layer of water, like a curtain staying up? It's because of the surface tension created by the oil layer. The oil layer is produced by these glands, one per close to a lash. Like think of them as toothpaste tubes. They are called the meibomian glands. Are we clear? So the meibomian glands produce meibum, which produces the oil, which coats your tear film. The main tear film is this blue layer, which is called the aqueous layer. This is the layer that has all the chemicals and growth facts and stuff that are needed for tears. That comes into your eye from the lacrimal gland that's in your orbit and like a shower, the tears come inside your eye, all right? And then the innermost layer is the mucin layer, which is this pink layer. This pink layer makes your tears stick to the eyeball. Otherwise the tears and the eyeball area, what we call hydrophobic. You know how certain uh, droplets can roll off your windshield because it doesn't stick? You want the tears to stick so the mucin layer helps that layer. So you can now understand tears much better. There's actually deeper science to this, but I'm trying to keep it simple. So anatomical levels, chemical and physical aspects of your tear film, very important that your doctors understand that. Once again, don't fall for any hype or advertising. Second, understand the anatomy of your eye, all right? Your water layer, which is the main layer, goes down via these tear ducts, one in each lid, straight to your nose. So the tears escape through your nose. So there are various techniques and technologies to block that from going down. I call that blocking the drain so the water stays in the sink for longer because the tap is producing very little, all right? So if you do that, you are then creating a lacrimal plug of some kind. I like the intracanalicular silicone plugs because they stay well and they actually become the size of the canal, not those plugs that hang around and can fall off if you cough or sneeze. That's a physical way of maintaining your tears. Then there are various techniques I've defined where you can actually open up these glands, the myboman glands along your lids, about 20-30 per lid. So the mybum or the oil starts coming out again, which was trapped for years. That oil gives stability to your tear film. And of course you can enhance your aqueous layer one by adding to it. That's what artificial tears do, which should be pH balanced and have a proper viscosity to it, all right? And if added, there are also what we call tear enhancing medications. Some of the drugs that come close to that are like Zedra, Restasis. So you also have uh, analogs of these that can increase your tears. So you want concepts that are increasing your tears, decreasing the loss, decreasing evaporation, not letting it get fast into the nose, letting it stay for longer, keep the oil layer to protect it. And now you'll suddenly start understanding the science behind dry eyes and tears, right? So do not fall for anything that says new technology, dry eye specialist, Find out if they really are. Find out the track record. Very important. So I hope this clarifies dry eyes. Now, people who have pingecula and pterygium, the little growth on the medial side, it can also be on lateral side, but more medial than lateral. These patients inherently, as I mentioned in my textbook, it's an inherent coexistent pathology of pingecula and pterygium, dryness. In fact, it's not so much dryness, it's ocular surface instability. So, for that, the tear film has to be stabilized looking at what layer and what chemical, physical aspects, osmolarity is impacted. Get that corrected. I fix that with my proprietary moist technique before, during and after surgery. Before by using various modalities to attack not only one but maybe multiple factors of the dryness and correct that. 
Second, during surgery, because I use the human placenta without stitches, the human placenta itself helps the dryness by correcting and rejuvenating your ocular surface, the goblet cells of your conjunctiva. And finally, because the surgery I do is without cutting, without using stitches, you create a very smooth ocular global surface. So you make the tear film more stable in the area for flow. So think about it, all three levels are taken care of with the technique I've described with the no-stitch amniotic surgery for your finger color and torture. As you all know, it's my passion and drive to make your eyes look beautiful too with this surgery. Not only keep the recurrence rate close to zero, but also keep it looking beautiful. Again, none of these are guarantees, but this should be a desire of every eye surgeon that I've been teaching and sharing with my concepts selflessly for the last three decades. So, dryness can be corrected, your pingicular tertium. Now your third question, doctor, can I wear contacts or glasses after surgery? Number one, why would you? There is a laser technique I have developed over the last three decades, not LASIK. You should not have LASIK with pingic clitoridium, either with or without surgery, because your, the suction that's kept around the cornea can further excite your pingicula and pterygium. And making a cut is really something you don't want because that adds to dryness, remember? LASIK causes more dryness with cutting the nasal ciliary nerves. So all those are wrong things. Laser plastique is a surgery that I've developed where without cutting, without using flaps or blades, I can fix your shape of the cornea and bring you to perfect vision, whether you're nearsighted, farsighted, have astigmatism or reading glasses. Additionally, if you're at the cataract age, you can even have premium cataract surgery with multifocal lenses and see distance and near without glasses. So once you do pterygium pingicular surgery in a very elegant fashion, what I call the sparkle technique, where you make the eye completely sparkle by removing the pingicular and pterygium, and you have stabilized the tear from your vision is another level of ecstasy to be delivered to you. So my concept of look good and see good is what I want every eye surgeon to aspire for. So I hope that clears all the questions you all have and have been asking me repeatedly, especially today we got a barrage of emails from patients from all over the world. So please get out of this confusion. Dry eye is something that is coexistent. It's not a surprise with pingicular pterygium. It can be corrected. There are levels of treating it. it has to be specific. Not Don't fall for advertisements and let's try this. Let's do a shotgun therapy. You want specific treatment. Then the surgery has to be extremely elegant, no stitch, cosmetically elegant. And then the follow-up should give you the ability to have your vision corrected surgery. Hope that clears it up for you. Dr. Kalani.